Bonnie J here from Insane Clown Posse, the Duke. Check me out on the Bootleg Kid Podcast. All right, we rolling, man. Bootleg Kid Podcast special guest here, one half of ICP, uh, hip hop legend. Uh, this guy has, uh, yo. Man, this Violent J is here from Insane Clown Posse, man. It's good to see you, brother. It's good to see you, my man. Yes. And I want you to know I appreciate being here. Man, I, I've been, I DM'd you a while ago, and I'm glad that you like we finally made this happen because ICP, for whatever reason, was just like an integral part of my childhood, and I never was like a big fan of you guys. I was always like, it was just around me. Yeah. Like, I never was into your guys' music, I'll say. It wasn't like I was it's like... It's an acquired taste. 100%. <laughs> I remember my cousin Zach moved from Texas to Arizona when I was probably like 10, and all he was listening to was The Great Malenko. And so that album, I like... I, you guys had great skits. And yeah. You yeah. know, it was like real We dumb. got that from Ice Cube. You yeah, know? yeah. You guys had some ill skits. Um, and then I just like, I got to give you guys flowers because I do feel like... You guys kicked the door down for so much of the entrepreneurialship that I don't, you know, I don't know if people ever give you credit or not, but you know, whether it's the merch, the throwing your guys' own festival, like you guys been doing Gathering of the Juggalos for yeah. how many years? It's gonna be the uh, 29th next year, so almost or, 30 or years, yeah. Yeah, and so, man. like, nowadays, we'll see artists like Tyler, the creator, do his own festival and, like, all, but, like, I'm like, you guys have been doing it for so long, man. We've been doing this. Yeah. Dude. Yeah, man. And, and uh, this year, Halloween is our 30th annual in Detroit. We, we play Halloween every year in Detroit called Hollowicky Clown Show. Yeah. And uh, this is our 30th year. That's crazy. 30 years. Damn. Yeah, man. I'm 36. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, man. I'm, 50, I'm 51 in this bitch. Wow. But I got to tell you something. Yeah. I got to tell you something. This is real shit. Yeah. If I'd have known when I was in my 20s that at 51, my conversation with bitches and the way it is with my boys would be this dope, I wouldn't have worried about getting old. Yeah. I thought I'd be corny as fuck. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I thought I'd be like my neighbor Tom. Right. Just stand there like everything he says is corny as fuck. You know right, what I mean? Right, right, right. And, and I thought I'd be like him. You know what I'm saying? But it, my conversations are the same as when I was in my 20s. And you're touring? And you're still putting out new albums? And oh, all the time, yeah. But you know what I mean? Like, it's not as bad as you thought. Plus, the other thing is, when, you know how kids, they don't look at you, they're just old school, whatever, right, right. you, you know? When you get older, you get wisdom. Yeah, for so sure. That's don't offend you and you're also not afraid I mean you're also not interested in what they're doing right. because your generation is getting older too so my heroes Snoop and everybody oh, you yeah. know what I'm saying they're all here you know like they're all my, our age so we're still watching each other and the game continues yeah for sure but when you start off young you think that's the only game there is is yeah. what's happening on uh, the hottest shit, the hottest shit bumping off but man we, you know tell that to Madonna, she's still killing it in her world. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Dropping albums and well, I mean, look, hip hop is the newest. Uh, I mean, one of the newest genres, right? It, yeah. it just turned it, fifty. It, it, it so actually, we have, we're finally seeing the OGs become like real OGs. And like, and, and the other thing is, being 51, bro, I saw the beginning of hip hop. Right. Yeah. You and that's a blessing, bro. Yeah. I saw the beginning of hip hop. I lived on this earth with Michael Jackson. Prince, you know what I'm saying? Those guys will hopefully become iconic for hundreds of years, right? Yeah. You know, it's an honor to be up here and, and be able to, you know, that type of shit. Yeah, man, it's cool, though. But, like, what, do, you, do you feel like you guys get the credit for some of the business? Because I feel like you guys set up some business models that other artists, like, I, I, you know, I've told this to Tech9. Tech's my brother. Love Tech. But I feel like Tech and Strange get credit for a lot of the shit that y'all were doing, like, years prior you know what i mean like i discovered tech through you guys you know what i'm saying yeah um, tech, yeah man me and tech man we almost we almost went to war you know what i'm saying right because it, it got um it was 2017 you know what i'm saying and that was a, a pivotal year in the juggalo lore because the number 17 is 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 everything and that's the only calendar year with 17 in it in all our in the juggalo's lives right. you know so anyway that year we were uh, also suing the FBI because they put us on the gang, the gang list. list. They put yeah. Juggalos as a gang, you yep, know? Yep, yep. So we're doing a march on Washington and all this shit, right? 
And um, Tech goes on Hot 97, and he's telling stories about fictitious shit, basically rumor shit. He's talking about like a, a raw dog line at the gathering, you know, like 50 ninjas gang banging a chick or whatever. That shit ain't, you know what I'm saying? It's, it, it, that shit just ain't true, you know what I mean? I've heard of, I've heard of some of the weird the shit that's at the, the gathering. The that's way, pretty gnarly. I'm just saying, <laughs> uh, no, 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 I'm not mad about tech no, no more, right. but the way he put it down... It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't positive. Our, it, our, what we were doing, you right. know. So it wasn't helping what you guys had going on at that time. Exactly. Right. And the other thing was, we were doing a concert there. We played. Uh, Rudy, where did we play? Right at the Lincoln Memorial. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. And um, it was a free concert, right? And I during the march we did we marched on Washington. It's like thousands of jugglers out there. We did a march because this is we don't know how else to. Right. They said they're a gang. It was insane. Well, you, know you guys, I mean? had, by 2017, you were on the gang list for years by that point, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, since 11, since yeah. it happened in 2011. Yeah. But here's the thing. You got to understand, bro, when, when, in certain parts of the country, when people are on a gang list, like if, if a juggalo gets pulled over and he, he suddenly on a gang list, you know what I'm saying? It's a problem. <laughs> he might be having a custody battle for his kids, right? And his wife, his ex-wife attorney, like, this is a gang member, according right. to the government of the United a States. Man tattoo or something. According yeah. to the government of the United States, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, this shit was fucked up. Uh, there was a probation officer for 15 years, mm -hmm. right? When that gang resignate thing came out, uh, when we made the top 10 gangs, she got fired. I mean, right in the pink slip, it was like, we saw it on your Facebook. You know what I mean? You're out of here. You know what I mean? Like Wow. So it ruined a lot of people's lives. People were getting thrown out of the military, bro. I always tell people. Told to re uh, um, cover their tattoos or have them removed. I say this all the time. I say there are real teachers teaching our kids right now with Hatcher Man tattoos in America. But anyway, <laughs> the, the, the point was um, but the Tech, tech had so, so many Juggalo fans, right? Tons. Yeah, you guys I, share I so many fans. he should have played that concert. You get what I'm saying? So I asked him. I felt like it was way in advance, you know what I mean? But I asked him to play the concert. Like, come do this, man. We're paying back. We're going through this. They're putting this shit on juggalos, you know what right. I mean? It's really fucking lives up. We don't know how else to combat it by, by except doing this marching concert, you know? Yeah. And uh, we tried suing them fucking four times it got thrown out of court. Suing the FBI? Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, because um, uh, you talked about merchandise and expenses and hot topics. Guess when that ended? When 2011, yeah. <laughs> the second that gang, you're like, fuck out of here. All that shit, it totally fucked our shit up. You know yeah. what I mean? And it's like, we're just chilling here. Independent, independent business, yeah. artists, you know what I'm saying? What the fuck is the problem? You right. know what I mean? Like, what is any, it's so outrageous, yet we just lost. Yeah. You know so, what I'm saying? So are you guys still on that list? The list don't exist no more. It came out in 2011. Yeah. Right? That was the only year they ever announced a list like that. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you guys are on that list with like the Crips, the Bloods, probably Hell's Angels, Area Nation, Nation MS-13, oh Juggalos. <laughs> Crazy. You know what I'm saying? Did you ever get an ex Did, explanation why? Let me tell you something, bro. There was a book that came out, right, yeah. called Juggalos. And um, we had nothing to do with this book, right? This motherfucking book. There are ex-Juggalos, I guess, or sellout Juggalos, right, mm -hmm. whose career it is or was, I don't know, to travel around mm -hmm. to police departments and give a seminar on juggalo identification, showing them all the labels and, and <laughs> logos. Crazy. You know what I'm saying? I and know, I'm reading this book. I know book. so many juggalos, and they're very, very harmless people. <laughs> <laughs> they're the most fucking wonderful people. Like, what, what the fuck? They're hardworking American citizens. Like, I don't understand what the fuck the thing is, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what, they come from broken homes? You know, what the fuck? Like, what can they do about it? You know what I'm saying? Like, they're, they're, I don't know what. Like, well, I don't know what makes them any less important than anybody else. People always say, oh, the only one into this shit are the juggalos. You mm -hmm. know, what the fuck are juggalos? Right. People. Just, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Fans, <laughs> just because like, I I they have a name, it's like the only one having fun, the only one liking ICP is people. I just met a you guy. I, I met a guy recently, like last week, actually. Uh, my boy who's... I won't even say who he is because you guys might know him. You guys definitely know the rapper. But his his guy who's on the road with him had a, I mean, he's just fully tattooed with like twisted, you guys, like he's fucking 
And I was like, oh, you're a juggalo. He's like, I'm a recovering juggalo, bro. And I was like, never heard that. Interesting. What does that mean? I don't know. But he's got all the tattoos. He's just a joke or something, right? I don't know what a recovering juggalo is. It's just covering. So if you're, yeah. Well, I, I, want, I want to put a bow on the tech thing because you guys are fine now. I get it now. He's dissing us. Oh, he's he, saying like, I used to be into that shit, but I'm I, I'm off that shit now or whatever. Oh, okay. So, uh, you, well, so um, when's the last time you guys talked? Who? You and Tech. Um. Well, man, we let me tell you something. Then he put out in a song. He, he said my name in a song. You know what I'm saying? And he's talking about Joe Bruce and, and um. I don't remember how he worded it, but it sounded like a fucking diss, right? So it was getting really heated up, you know, and um. He. We talked. He, I had to fucking drive to a gas station, and I just get, was in my car. You know what I'm saying? I'm a texter. He yeah. wanna he wanna get on He's the phone. He's a phone guy, yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, here we go. You know, three hours, bro. I respect the. Let me say this. I respect the motherfucking shit out of that man. He's the best, hands down, man. Yeah. That motherfucker is a real one for sure. Okay, he talks sense into me. He's one of the realest dudes in the game. I always say that, man. And he's a humble he, guy. He was like, um. Brother, you don't want Juggalos to be labeled as a gang? If me and you fall out, that's exactly what they're going to be. You know what I mean? Because, uh, you know, he was telling me he's, he's, he's with the blood. He's, he's a blood. And if we go to war, you know what I'm saying? It's going to be Juggalos against Bloods and shit. And I just was like... The Juggalos are a fan base. You know what I'm and, saying? And also... If They're you, not out here like well, that. This is the thing. If you go to a tech show... But they are, though, bro. Unfortunately, right. they are like that. Right, right, right. Tech right. was like, man, he's got motherfuckers waiting in line at, at, at meet and greet coming up and trying to swing on him and shit. Oh. Like, I see big bitch, you know? And he's telling these stories to me. And he's like, he's he, he, uh, he one of his shows got a bomb threat or whatever. We hadn't even fallen out. Right. You know what I mean? What what, what is the website? We haven't even yeah, but you, fallen out. You guys have a pretty dedicated internet That's fan what base. What's it? Fagolovers.net? They've covered some of my interviews. Is it Fago Lovers? Is that the Fago website? Fago Lovers, yeah. yeah. I think so, yeah. I, I don't know if there's if that's a website, right? I right, mean, but they but I know that they'll like speculate on shit, you know? Yeah, I don't go there. Right. I don't fuck with them anymore. I used to like them. But uh, I don't fuck with them. I don't go there no more. I don't, I, you know, I don't really go on any websites like that. But 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 you guys have that three hour conversation and everything. Yeah, it was intense, bro. He was like, "Look, man, you know, I." He was like, "I'm telling you right now, um, what was he saying?" And I was like, "Do you think I'm afraid?" He like he, he was like, "You do not want to." Um, he said, "You do not want to go to war, man. You, we we don't want to go to war over this." And I'm like, "Exactly." And um. He said something, but I was like, do you think I'm soft, bro? Do you think that's, uh, I'm afraid of that, to war with you? Right. And he said, I am. You know what I mean? But somehow I put it like, he was like, I'm afraid, bro. We don't need to be doing this. You know what I mean? And it was, I don't remember exactly, it was five years ago, but yeah, it, we worked it out, man. That's beautiful. Thank God. You know Thank God. Saying? And we worked it out. And that Oh, and he also put me up on game about who, his whole thing, because I, I was like, Bro, you know, you start wearing the paint. I didn't ever seen him wear the paint until halfway through the Wick and Wonka tour. Right. You know what I'm saying? Not halfway through, maybe like the beginning of it. But I, ne I, I, he wasn't wearing the paint at the beginning, you know? So I thought, okay, he's, he's, he's doing what we're doing. That's cool. You know what I'm saying? So then it's now it's a thing he still does, you know? But he was telling me, man, I've been wearing paint since way before you. You know what I'm saying? And, and not before me, but you get what I'm saying. Since way before Right. He we always kind of went by know? like the killer clown, you know, back in the day. Exactly. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he was, though. You know, he 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 was. Um, I used pictures and shit. Yeah. He yeah. put me up on game. He, he told me about his history and everything. And, um, you well, know, it, it always was intense. Like, but it, well, was, it always seemed like you guys had such a, like a shared fan base like if you go to a tech we show yeah. i've been to hunt like a probably 50 tech shows Fuck in my yeah. life. and you're always gonna see juggalos there so every listen, time he was like my security thinks my security tells me um he said my security uh says we should just we should do uh what do you say my security says he wants to kick you some shit like that right and i was like fuck that dude you know fuck him for thinking that you know whatever his appointment whatever his thing was anyway so then Tech comes to Detroit on tour at State Theater. And um, and I'm like, 
you know, this is all happening, right? So anyway, we worked it out where uh, me and Joey are going to go up on stage and introduce him. You know what I'm saying? That's dope. Yeah, so so we went up there and introduced him on stage, you know. But when I got to the venue, right, the fuck, his security fucking throws me against the wall. You know what I'm saying? You're talking about OG mugs? Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, I love like, they, And I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck, y'all? You know what I'm saying? Like, get off me. He, he didn't know what was happening, probably, right? Uh, no, they didn't knew. Know. Oh, okay, okay. They was just he... didn't. He was telling me. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. His security was like, fuck them dudes, you know? Yeah, and mugs. I was like, well, fuck them. Tell them fuck you. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so uh, when I got there, they were rough, you know? Even though I'm there to make the fucking peace. You know you what's know? crazy is the last time I saw Tech was last year we were in Detroit when I told you. And he happened to have a show across the street from where the Tigers play, right by the Eminem uh, restaurant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. That's right where I'm talking about. State yeah, yeah. Theater. So we went to the show, and I, I told, I told people like, uh, you know, I'm from Arizona, so we have a certain type of white trash. Is is we have our own specific white trash, you know? But the, at that show, being in the crowd at a tech show in Detroit, I got to see Detroit white trash, and I was like, oh, I got, I got it. Like, I got it. I was like, oh, I get it now. Like, this is like, you know, auto factory, like, you know, middle of America, Rust Belt fucking hey, is different. You know what I'm saying? Is, I heard. No, no, I'm saying that I, I'm saying that there's, I mean, I, I'm white trash. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that. I, I, I definitely got to see some white trash at the Tech Nine show. Not all of them are white trash. What is, what is, you know. But it was just, it was just funny because I was just like, you know, we have our own type of white trash. Like, my yeah. family's like, bunch of meth heads and like yeah. you know biker dudes right that's like phoenix white track. ain't that everybody white though that's fair you know what I'm <laughs> oh, oh, that's <laughs> i was just saying the detroit white trash was definitely hitting different i got it i was like yo this might have been eminem if he didn't make it like standing here watching tech nine like you know what I'm yeah saying? man but man yeah he's the shit man i really no nah, tech's great man i'm that. glad you guys worked that out i didn't yeah, even, i knew shit. you i knew that there was some sort of like um like it was out there that you guys had, you know, it might have been an issue, but I, I, you know, I knew it was squashed. I just didn't yeah. know the backstory it's all good, as to man, how that happened. God. Because That's crazy. If we were gonna go to a war like that. We were gonna come at him hard, of course. You know what I mean? Because he's so in our, integrated in into our your world. world. Yeah, it's you crazy. Know what I'm saying? So we weren't just gonna, you know. It, but no, of course, yeah. But That's the first time I saw him was on the Wicked Walker, uh, the Wicked Walker tour at Mesa Amphitheater. It was what was that? You guys, Bone Thugs, Cottonmouth Kings, and Tech. Yeah, and. uh and uh, E. No, I wasn't on that tech got to go. That's, that you didn't do none of the dates? You were on the fucking Halloween song with us. No, we all did a song I, together, I, too. Yeah. But that, uh-huh. that, and what's crazy is that that tour, for like that period of time, Cottonmouth Kings were fucking huge. Oh, yeah, They man. had their I own. Isn't that an unfortunate thing with them, man? I know that they. I know. Well, I know that they had like a falling out. Like certain members. I think Daddy X. We tried to bring them together because they were another huge staple in the juggalo world. Huge SRH. You know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah, no, for sure. We rest in peace, Pacalica. Those motherfuckers. You can't even get two of them together. Yeah. They all hate each other. It's insane. Like, no, like it's crazy. We, we, we did a, me, me and Joey, me and Shaggy did a whole fucking uh, episode of our podcast trying to uncover what really happened you know what i'm right. saying Between i've heard them. certain shit because I, I think it was like a, initially like a split and then the uh what's the dude's name who owns suburban noise uh fuck i can't think of his name right now what's the guy's name who owns oh if, oh fuck yeah um i know his name too what the fuck kevin zinger, kevin kevin Z- zinger. Yeah. yeah all yeah. right uh, um but bro here's the thing why it's been so unfortunate okay okay look icp mm-hmm. right I ain't ne- me and Shaggy ain't never made the money we're making right now, ever. So you guys at this moment are making the most money you've ever made. Fuck yes. Shit, c- when we congrats. had four albums on the I- chart, bro. Listen, to what I'm saying is nostalgia. Mm-hmm. Okay, when we had four um, albums on the on the charts, you, you know what I'm saying? And you guys were one thousand percent going platinum. Yeah. <laughs> in in the nineties. Yeah, we, we figured it out. We sold eight million records. Crazy. And I don't know nothing about... That's when records were here. Right, right, right. That's when... <laughs> you know go to the store, yeah. It's been a few years since streams have been around. I don't know how to fucking do that. But I know one of our singles, Hocus Pocus, mm-hmm. just went gold in streams. How many years later? Yeah, just in streams. That's just crazy. in streams yeah. on its own. You know, mm-hmm. like... like in Because in, 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 of the TikTok shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They did like a... um. 
like a thing to it. Um, Hocus Pocus in the, you know, they got these fads they do, you know what I'm saying? It was called Clown Check, I think, you know? That's anyway, funny. that shit went gold because of TikTok. We're wow. like, ah, oh, yeah. Congrats. Yeah, I mean, I don't, but anyway, what I was going to say, the reason point of, the, of this <clears throat> is this nostalgia, man, for these old groups. Like, like okay, like, let me tell you, my, my boy Vanilla Ice, when he came out, right, mm-hmm. look at how fucking massive, right? Right. Then, this motherfucker was hurting. Right. You get what I'm saying? He was opening for us, and, and like, he was hurting, though. You get what I'm saying? Like, he wasn't, he was just playing rock clubs. He was, he was you know what I'm yeah, saying? I remember he was, yeah, I remember. Small venues, mm-hmm. you get what I'm saying? Years go by, look at him now. You know what I'm saying? On the, I love their 90s tour. Right. All of those fucking acts had to hurt for a minute. Yeah, you and, and it's mean? dope to see Tone Low, Salt Pepper, right. fucking uh, No, that's a sick tour to see like that, like that, and that tour sell. Like even like this, Bone Thugs as well. Bone Thugs killing. Bone it. Thugs used to fucking play to small venues. Yeah. Shots are crazy. Like, the, like you know, like us. Right. We, our whole ICP's entire career, we play like two thousand seat venues. Except for the Wicked Wonka tour. Yeah, because we had all the Because that was crazy. Us, yeah, because you, know I mean? you guys did like 8,000 8, in Mesa. Own, yeah, about 2,000. Yeah, yeah, no, I've been to You know shows. what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, my, um, but look at the look at the nostalgia, though. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's different now. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, um, okay, like, let me give you an example. Um, I, I give this example a lot, and if anybody's watching and they hear me say this a lot, I'm sorry, but Vanilla Ice... Fucking, um, we used to play the festivals mm-hmm. in, in the 90s, in, mm-hmm. in early 2000s, right? Every once in a while, we'd get booked on a festival. There'd be like 500 to 1,000 juggalos up front. The rest of the crowd, literally, bro, would be like, you know. Yeah, it was kind of cool to hate shit. you guys. It was cool to hate you guys for a while. Yeah, well, yeah. Like, everybody's yeah. like, fuck you. They're here to see System of a Town. They're yeah, here yeah. to see Cypress Hill. Yeah. They're like, fuck y'all, you know? That was always a, our whole experience. We stopped doing fucking festivals for 20 years. We because just of did that? our own shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're like, fuck, fuck it. it. We're going to do you our know? own thing. We do our own thing and we're juggaloed out, right? We're doing our thing and, and we got like, we're signing bands. We're doing our thing all in our own little juggalo world or whatever, right? And um, fucking Vanilla Ice in 2017 is like, yo, I want you to come out and do, do a song. You know what I mean? And I'm like, where, where, where are you playing? I'm thinking he's going to say the shelter. You right, know? right, 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 right. He's like, I'm at, um, I'm at Pine Knob. You know, I'm like, this is a fucking amphitheater. Right. I'm like, what's going on? He's like, I love the 90 tour. This is five years ago, bro. Right. He's out there. He's been doing it. <laughs> no, he's still I doing it. I remember that tour. You know? Yeah, it's still, it's still going. I feel like every year. It is. It's yeah. what I'm saying. It's massive. They do multiple tours at right. once. You right, know right, what I'm right. saying? So um, these guys were hurting, bro. They were playing Fucking small rock clubs, 300 people. Mm-hmm. And look at them now. Yeah. You know, and, and, and anyway, the point was he, he called us out and fucking the place exploded. And me and Joy are like, we told him before, we're, we're like, we're not used to this. Yeah, we're like, no, we told him before, we're like, you don't want to bring us out, bro. Because that, because you're used to, if the crowd's not there to see you guys, they're I not I thought gonna everybody's like, yeah. going to boo, and, right. and, and, and he was going to be like, what the fuck, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And I didn't want to hurt his show. I'm like, bro, you don't want to bring us out here, you know? Especially on the I Love the 90s tour, although that we were the exact opposite. Right. Of that shit, we were the wicked shit. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? We were like, fuck the radio. And right, fuck right, 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 right. You know. Yeah. And I'm like, why do you want to bring us out there? And he's like, come on, man. And so when when um, me and Shaggy came to the front and they put us on the fucking screens, the whole fucking place exploded. And we were like, what? That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? We hadn't done a festival in 20 years, bro. Nothing like that. Just your own shit. Just our own shit. And the biggest you- crowd we do every year is the gathering or Halloween and in front of those are like mm-hmm. our staple events, you know? But man, we thought, uh, you know, even when we walked the red carpet one time in the, in the early fucking 2000s at the Billboard Awards, right? They had bleachers and fans all in the bleachers. Me and Shaggy got out of the limo, they fucking booed. And we were like, fuck yeah! What are we doing here? We just were yelling, we don't go to award shows or right, MTV right. shit. It's you not know? for us. We yeah. were like, what are we doing here? Fuck yeah! You know what I'm saying? On the red carpet with the backstreet boys. Right, 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 right. I never saw none of those photos either. Right. How the fuck could those photos not show up? We were chilling with the backstreet boys. You guys were with the. That's oh, fucking crazy. That makes no sense. It's like a dream. Where did those pictures go? 
They didn't have phones like this back then. <laughs> they didn't have phones. No, this is a red carpet. I know, but it was a target service. They're somewhere. Yeah, man. That's anyway, crazy. That's weird. No, so um, let's talk about the gathering because uh, it is an it is a thing. Did you ever see the workaholics episode? Fuck yeah. About that shit was hilarious. Yeah, it was. They did it good too. Yeah, it was yeah. good. Man, there's a movie that came out called Family. Mm -hmm. And the character in the movie is a juggalo, right? And she goes to the gathering. And they asked us to uh, make a uh, cameo and be like we're on stage at the right. thing. Man, me, me and uh, Shaggy are like, what is this going to be, you little rinky dink shit? They rebuilt the fucking gathering. <laughs> you show up and you're like, oh shit. There was a f f a rides, right. carnival rides, you know, a, a crowd. Right. You know what I'm saying? Tents everywhere. People on golf carts partying and shit. <laughs> bonfires. I'm like, how the fuck did they do that? Yeah. You know what I mean? It was crazy. And um, yeah, it was cool though, man. You guys, uh, so I've had I've had lots of friends perform. I was trying to fuck the chick from uh, 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 Orange is the New, what is it? Orange is the New Black? Yeah. <laughs> fuck yeah. She's in that movie? Yeah, I was, me and her dog, we were fucking, she knows it. She knows it. Yeah. We were spitting game. Mm. And, and the other chick was there from um, um, for, and Family Pie, American Pie. American, American Pie. Pie. Yeah. She was there and um, she knew it too. Yeah. You know what I mean? And she was, she kept going like, uh, you know, we were just spitting game, like talking. Like, right. we weren't, you know. Anyway, then um, we talked on text for like a month and then it ended. <laughs> But we didn't kick, I didn't mean we were speaking game like, yeah, like, we were talking about right. shit, interesting shit, you know what I mean? I wasn't like, I'm like getting your panties and fuck shit. Right. It like, wasn't like, like that. Like, hey, you, you know got a I mean? mirror in your pants? Because I can see myself in there. You know what I mean? <laughs> but it was dope, though. No, I was going to ask you, so I've heard some, okay, so I heard at the gathering, there's some crazy shit going on. I've seen video of the feet guy. Have you seen this guy? He's like the guy at the gathering who like licks all the chick's feet. No, man. I ain't seen that. <laughs> I, I've heard about the drug bridge at a certain point in time. Wasn't there oh, a drug yeah. board, a bridge yeah. where like it was kind I of. I wish there was still a drug bridge. There should be. It was like a nice, like safe, open, like everybody can go and you have. Go there and get your shit. <laughs> I don't know, man. I just don't want nobody to, um, you know, get hurt. And of, die, course, you know? of course, of course, of course. Well, this um, was before I think we had to worry about like fentanyl and shit. This was obviously years ago. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And, and then, and then um, our good. Alle that's why I said allegedly. allegedly. These things didn't happen all this time. was not a, a thing we did. Ale no, it it's a fan part, thing. It's I, a fan. I, here's where we'll it's put the drug like bridge. On the <laughs> it's not like on the festival map there was like drug bridge. No, like, yeah. it was just like <laughs> it was like a fan thing. It's in the program. Yeah, yeah. program. Yeah. No, and then um, yo, Jelly Roll told told me about. <laughs> <laughs> some sort of fuck tent or something that was going allegedly. on. Allegedly, there was a fuck tent. That's dope. What's wrong with that? Nothing's wrong with that. There it's, should be some in several locations. It sounds that uh, I, we would look. It just wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's actually a fucking great idea. A fuck tent. What the fuck? We can provide like six tents on the ground, big red tents, and light them up all red, right? Yeah. And be like, and you go in there and it's just all lavish and clean. A place you go in there and fuck. You know, you're all in a wet tent. You know what I'm saying? Mosquitoes and shit. You boys are right outside the <laughs> nylon. You know what I mean? You can go away to the fuck tent. You know what I'm well, saying? You, you guys have For a small fee. Oh, yeah, like a, like a little. And then there's just like, you know, willing lovelies in there, you know? Because all we're getting is a tent. Consenting, willing. Allegedly. Allegedly, allegedly, allegedly consenting. Juggalettes. I don't know what that's actually dope. Like that's actually a dope idea. Fuck time. Not a terrible idea. What's the craziest thing? Is with, it really it's a bad idea? No, it's not a bad idea. What's the craziest thing with your own eyes you've seen at the uh, at the at the gathering that you can talk about allegedly that you allegedly saw with your own eyes? Yeah, no, man, I, I allegedly nothing. The gathering is off the fucking chain. I dude, I want to, <laughs> I want to fucking go. No, like, and then, what's in the it. middle of Ohio, right? Bro, listen, I I I, I really advise you to go on, on account of this. I know you're a wise man, mm -hmm. and there's nothing worth more than experiences, memories. For sure. You know what I'm saying? And you will absolutely never forget, not if you live to be a thousand, right. going to the gathering, bro. And, and there's absolutely no fucking danger. 
Right. And that's that's your, the and, biggest misconception. Wait, didn't didn't somebody get booed off stage? It was was it Tila Tequila? Yeah. <laughs> that was so, and then didn't who was the, <laughs> unless you're an artist <laughs> unless you're an artist <laughs> and they don't right. like you because <laughs> wow who, what a weird thing I just said there's no danger and then you're like what about Tina Lee Tequila <laughs> unless you're an artist Cause, absolutely you're right there has been rappers that they've thrown shit at fuck yeah my heroes bro who? I've, I've seen I've seen some of my heroes go down wow. and leave the stage you know what I mean wow. like who too short oh they almost got old Dirty Bastard off. Oh. And it was, I believe, the last concert of his life. Wow. Oh, you had ODB at the gathering? Right before he passed away, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Man. Were you able to talk with him when he got there? Who was up there? Somebody ran up there with ODB. That sounds And was crazy. like, because they were throwing shit. Yeah. And ODB was starting to get mad, you know? I mean, they throw shit. That's what they do. They're not always trying to hit you. Right. They're just throwing shit. Look at in the air. Yeah. They throw shit. There's just shit flying everywhere, right, you know, right, right, right. including at the stage, you know. And uh, some people don't know how to do it. Other people like Yellow Wolf, that motherfucker caught, a, you know, psh, and drank it. <laughs> and, and the place popped. You like know fucking I mean? stone like, cold catching a beer on the fucking Exactly. The, the crowd loved it. Like he's, he's saying, I got no problem with this. Yeah. I'm rocking this. Right, right, right. You know right, what right. I mean? And, and um, that's what you the kind of energy you have to have. Because sometimes guys get up there and they get they want to thug, you know? Yeah. And that is, of course, the worst thing. Because if you thug on one juggalo, everybody the gathering of the good juggalos. Everyone's turning against you're you. You're in the wrong place. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that's it, as, as, as crazy. I didn't know you guys had ODB. Or even if you're up there trying to act like... You're too you're cool to be there. You're harder than them. Right, 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 right. And, and you, you know what I'm saying? The only ones that ever got away with clearly looking harder than them was fucking um, last year. Who played last year? The, the main group. I'm, I'm, I can't remember. I'm getting so dumb. Um, not Suicide Boys. The other group. Um, um, I know you're talking about. City Morgue. Yeah. City Morgue, yeah. yeah. City Morgue. City Morgue goes up there, bro. They killed it. They killed it. Fucking slayed them. Wow. Like, I, that's they love that wicked shit. Fire. City Morgue is a, is a, a version of, of wicked shit. Yeah. And Suicide Boys. Mm -hmm. Listen to them. They do that 3-6 Mafia shit. Yeah. It's like very fucking 3 six. Like Suicide Boys are very, very 3-6 Mafia style. Man. I feel yeah. like DJ Paul's kind of a, adopted the Juggalo, Slum American DJ, oh, Jug, DJ fan DJ base Paul's, pretty heavily. Me and DJ Paul are, are actually fucking very close. No, he's a great guy. He's so fucking great, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We did an album together. He wouldn't stay at my house. I have my studios in my, in my front yard, right? He wouldn't stay at my house because he didn't like the woods I live in. He's like, fuck that. <laughs> I'm like, what? What do you think a bear's going to jump through the window or something? That's crazy. But he's the shit, man. He's so dope. I love him, man. Yo, so when you guys got put on that list, did you notice besides getting taken out of stores, besides all of the financial ramifications that happen, were you guys like being followed by the police ever? Cause you I, don't, I don't know. We like you guys didn't ever have any sort of like idea like, man, these motherfuckers are like making like our lives very hard. Like, cause you know, if, if you're, obviously you guys are. You know what's crazy though, man? The um, ACL, what is it? The ACLU? Yeah. They fucking jumped on our, our side. Fire. Yeah. Shout they out like to them. jumped on our side and, and they were in the court with us and shit. Wow. Straight up. That's fucking sick. Yeah, we did a press press conference and everything. You That's know what I mean? That's amazing, man. It was insane, man. And we um so we we uh we did the fucking march, right? Um and uh um it's a publicity stunt, right? That's what it is. Mm -hmm. So we did this press run, and, and man, me and Shaggy were on some crazy shit, you know, out in New York. Yeah. Like, talking about it, and it sounds like we're, it sounds so fucking outrageous. It is, because it was, but, yeah. But we did, like, all the shit in New York, all, yeah. all the shows, right? And I feel like we succeeded. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't, like you said at the beginning, you said you don't think Juggalos um, get their due respect. Or, I feel like y'all don't get your respect for, I feel like... Your guys' business models, you guys were the first to really 
be fully vertical. Yeah. Like, you guys were able to, like, do your own merch, throw wrestling shows, have your own festival. Like, these are things that, like, first of all, n- n- like, everybody's doing nowadays. You know what I'm saying? Um, rap trivia for anybody out there listening. I'm going to name four labels, okay? Um, let's see. Luke Records. Mm-hmm. Rap-A-Lot Records. Def Jam Records, Death Row Records. Insane Clown Posse was signed to one. Does anybody know that? Was it Def Jam? Yes. Yeah, it was Def Jam, yeah. We I were on that. Def Jam. <laughs> How ridiculous does that sound now? No, I remember to me, that. It's just like, I remember fucking Leo Cohen. Was it? Was, was, was uh, screaming in my face. Oh my God. Tell me about that. Bro, like a thug. I can't imagine Leo Cohen getting you guys. He or did, I don't think he did, but, but <laughs> yeah. I remember we 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 were supposed to do these branch visits. Mm-hmm. When we're on tour, we go in there. We're in a New Jersey branch for the label, and we meet everybody, you know. Right, right. And um, we were skipping that shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We just didn't want to keep doing that. We're tired and shit, you know. So we're just not. Anyway, we got to New York, man, and he fucking he was like, "You think you're from the street? I'm from the fucking street." You know what I'm saying? And, and it was just like, you know, and then he was like, now, let's get to business. He was like, I'll get you anybody. He was, all of a sudden was cool as fuck. He's like, we can get anybody you fucking want. On a record. On a record. Right. You name it, it's happening. You know what I mean? And it went from, I thought I'm about to fight this dude. Right. <laughs> to now I want to fuck the dude. <laughs> I was going to say, pause. Uh, I was gonna say who who ended up bringing you guys into the label? Like who was the? No, what happened was <clears throat> we were on Island Island, Merge. and then I and then Island merged. Right? Okay, it merged. And then definitely. Island was gone. Ah, yeah, yeah. That you makes know what I'm saying? That. Yeah, yeah. And, and so they kind like, of inherited you guys. I remember walking through the office at Def Jam, right? And people are like, "What is this Halloween?" <laughs> the whole label because they had no idea. They yeah it was you, just like, "What the fuck is what's this?" What's happening? You know? And um, here's the funny thing, right? We sold two million albums for fucking Island, right? Right. Our next, uh, our next album is platinum, right? Um, we do, we do a double album, and they both almost go gold, right? Now, they just Def Jam, let's they just let the contract expire. We didn't get dropped. Well, you guys did that. They too. didn't re-sign. I remember you guys dropped two albums on the same day, right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You guys did Double that before album, Nelly. Yeah. Huh? No, because it was two different albums. You had to buy both. Yeah, exactly. Was, you yeah. guys did that before Nelly. Because Nelly did it. But yeah. like, y'all really, I, I think you guys are the first people to be like. Oh, man, we did it We did, we did it because he did it. <laughs> oh. Well, yeah. He did the Judgment Day album. That's you know crazy. what I'm saying? He did Night and Day. And back in the day, and just clocked on everybody, you know? It's like, yeah, because no, your fans are going to just buy one. Fuck yeah. They're going to buy you two. Know. And why would you combine them? Yeah, and yeah. Then, and, fuck right. that. You know, but um, yeah, we here we are. You know what I'm saying? And they just let our contract expire. Yeah. So suddenly we signed with another label for fucking million dollars. Wow. Who's the other label? uh, uh, The label was a new a new label. Okay. Right. And they were called um, D three. D three. I remember D three. D three Entertainment. D three is um. They had Old Dirty Bastard. They had us. They they they. uh, Was that Quincy Jones' son? Maybe I'm tripping. That's QD three. QD three. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. But um. Man, it just was insane because they Def Jam could have like sold us to another label if they didn't want us. Right. You know what I'm saying? Or got some override. You know what I mean? Like here, you guys can have, but we're getting points. You know. Right, right. We get. To, yeah, yeah. They, they just, just let, you let guys us walk. walk. Yeah. You know what I mean? Probably better for you. They didn't even. I don't think they even knew. Our attorney was like, "Yo, it's two weeks. Def Jam hasn't resigned yet." You know. And then he's like, "Yo, it's a week." You know. And then he's like. Tomorrow. No, they didn't resign, right? <laughs> yeah. And he's like, um, don't say nothing. Uh, he's like, don't say anything. We'll let a week pass, and then we'll notify him. That we're leaving. We're leaving. <laughs> we're, we're gone. You know what I mean? Not that we wanted to leave. It just it, we Yeah, they just became a, everything changed. Can you, um, I feel like you guys did such a great job of branding, because I remember all, like, like, there was like the series of albums where all of the covers were very similar. Then you'd open the book and the CDs were all very similar. Like, you guys had like very dope branding. Like, every album had a different oh, man. clown. Yeah. 
and then the jersey would go with it or the shirt. Who? Because I, I do feel like, um, you know, on the marketing side, you guys were amazing. Who was kind of the brainchild behind like some of the early like shit that you guys would come up with? Maybe, whether it be like, hey, we got to make sure this line of albums are consistent with the art and the CDs and I they all kind of go man. together. I know this much doing that shit back then um, is the reason we still move physical units today. Yeah, you know what I'm people, saying. It's their collectors' eyes. Yeah, it's like people. People always are gonna wonder what you're gonna do. You know, like we'll put like a fucking pair of 3D glasses in there, and and put all kind of crazy shit mm -hmm. in there, and we put a booklet with like mazes and funny. No, I remember shit that. I remember. Yeah, you guys had the mazes on the front. Yeah. Yeah, and then like you could uh, pull shit out and make a piece of dice, and you know what I mean. Yeah, it's yeah. just cool. Like, uh, you know what I'm saying. But yeah, we we include we do shit like that and try to do really good packaging. And um, to our benefit, that comes from back in the day, though. Any, you know, I don't know. I don't know where that comes from. We are, that's just from always done it like that, you know? You guys just always kind of had a knack for like. I think so. Yeah, yeah that's the best way of putting it. Can knack, you, can you, can you yeah. give me the origins of the Hatchet Man logo? Yeah, that, man. That everyone has tattooed? In, in the very beginning, me and Joey, me and Shaggy, he's like, um, we, had two, we had two ideas for the label mm -hmm. name. One was one was a great name, Mad Paper Boy, right? And, and, and it was going to be a guy on a bike with a, with a um a fucking newspaper like pa like paper like the game. Yeah. And we wanted to call it back then. This is before paper was known as money, though, right? Because um there was a fucking paper boy used to come through looking like fucking the Napoleon Dynamite kind of right and, and and fucking throwing papers everywhere and um. He was our boy. We just loved to see him. So we were like, how about Mad Paperboy uh, Records? And, and um, I thought that would have been cool. The other one was Psychopathic, you know. It's same idea, but now it's just a guy with a, instead of a paper, he's got the, uh, the, the um, hatchet, man. You know what I mean? Yo, we got to stop the interview again and tell you about our folks at Odd Socks, baby. That's right. Shout out to Odd Socks, man. The most comfortable socks in the world. They've been riding with us since day one. Um, and let me tell you something, man. Christmas time is, is really sneaking up. Um, oddsocksofficial.com use the promo code bootleg save 20 percent off at checkout they got the crazy licenses check out these naruto socks fucking fire little spongebob socks you know what i'm saying how about this how about the how high movie socks they got the wwe they got the motherfucking cheeto socks you know what i'm saying shout out to the motherfucking cheeto socks they just dropped their monopoly line too i'm waiting for them to send them to me ahmad Send me the Monopoly shit, buddy, all right? Also, the Odd Socks Basics. These are my favorites. They're just normal, just, you know, the most comfortable socks you've ever put on your feet is really what they are. Uh, get them black, white, red, fucking tie-dye, whatever you're into. And they got the underwear, baby. Little Reese's boys. Let's go. Oddsocksofficial.com. Use the promo code BOOTLEG. They got South Park underwear, too. All the licenses, WWE, Scarface, Breaking Bad, South Park, Power Rangers, Monopoly, Coca-Cola, they got it all. Use uh, that promo code bootleg and save 20% off at checkout. Also, want to give a shout out to our sponsor. Uh, much love to our good folks at Blue Chew. That's right. We talk about it all the time on the podcast. When you go to bluechew.com right now, you can get your first month for free. A lot of people ask, well, what is Blue Chew and does it work? Well, Blue Chew, it has the same active ingredient as Viagra and Cialis. The only difference is you don't have to go to the doctor. It's all online. You go to bluechew.com. You get your shit handled over there, and then they get you handled by sending you a month for free when you use the promo code bootleg. Bluechew.com, promo code bootleg. Try out Blue Chew. It'll have your, uh, your dick harder than it's ever been. It's like trigonometry in high school, real hard. You know, if you're dealing with any sort of erectile dysfunction, uh, Blue Chew will have you right. Like I said, same active ingredient as Viagra and Cialis minus the awkward doctor's appointment. Everything's online. And if you're asking, well, I don't know, man. I just don't know. Try it out for free for a month. They'll send you a month's supply for free right to your doorstep in discreet packaging. Blue chewable form. It's in a little, it's a little chewable, man. You take that thing down and then you go to Pound Town. Take your shorty to Pound Town, goddammit. Bluechew.com. Use that promo code bootleg. Try it for free for a month. Let's get back to the interview. It's crazy because... I mean, thousands upon thousands of people have tattoos of you guys. Fuck yeah. Do you remember the year that you first noticed? Like, because that's got to... When artists 
get like have fans that are that dedicated. It's I, I can only imagine how trippy it's got to be when it first happens. Be like, yo, this guy's got us tattooed on him. Like, do you remember, like when you guys first started to notice that your guys' fans were that dedicated? Because that's a level of commitment that <laughs> man. What, what 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 do you say to a ninja that walks up to you, pulls his shirt off, and his entire back, you know, is all fucking in his whole body and sometimes you know what i mean what do you say right how do you even react to that that's just something I, it, it it it's like uh, the type of person i am I, it makes me uncomfortable a ping of um a ping of a uh, heart you know what i mean mm-hmm. or whatever the fuck term is right because i don't know how to fuck to you know re- respond to that it's so stunning are you are you used to it yet because at this no, point we're talking i'm not i'll never be used to that and i'll never understand it you know um i don't want to say the wrong thing i love the the fucking devotion and dedication you get what i'm saying right but me i i you know i i, I would um one thing i don't like doing i'm not i don't like signing my name for an autograph because they'll, on get a a tat- chick. because they'll get a tattoo on a hottie, right? I don't want that. I'm like, man, if you were my woman, I don't want that ninja's name. Yeah, like I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to ruin your love life five years from now. <laughs> I, I'm like, no, I, I don't. I'm not used. Especially, I'm. You know, I'm not gonna do it to any. I don't like right. that. You know what I'm saying? We sign it so I can get a tattoo. Fuck no. Yeah. You, you, you know. But uh, if a, if if somebody if a dude wants that, whatever, man. I I just I just. Don't give a fuck up myself. I don't give a fuck about an autograph. Right. I don't have no autograph. I don't have any pictures of any, me and anybody. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Right. You know what I mean? Nah, yeah, I can imagine, bro. Cause the only yeah. person that ever, um, the only person that ever made me and uh, Shaggy nervous to meet mm-hmm. was when we met Vince McMahon. Hey, that had to be sick. Bro, our fucking mouths dried out. Like we were both like. And he was like, hey, who who won the Grim Tim contest, you know? And that was like a contest we were having back then, mm-hmm. you know? And we just looked at each other. <laughs> well, I remember you guys coming out. Um, I mean, you guys are, for people, I mean, I'm a huge wrestling fan. And you guys are also very heavily uh, aligned in, in the wrestling world. You guys have had your own, uh, the Juggalo Wrestling, what is it? The, yeah, yeah. You guys have had your own wrestling federation. Fuck yeah, man. We've been at WWE. You guys have been in WWE. WCW. Uh, ECW. Um, bro, before I forget, you want to hear something crazy? Mm-hmm. Um, my girlfriend, mm-hmm. three weeks ago. Yeah. She's like, I had a dream you were on stage with Roseanne Barr. And I'm like, <laughs> I was like, you girl, what the fuck would I be doing on stage with Roseanne Barr? You right. know what I mean? And it happened, bro. <laughs> what? It happened. In the last three weeks? And I'm going to post the text, because she sent me that in a text. Wow. I'm going to post the text with the, you can see, I don't know if you can see, I'm going to put the date, maybe people right, right. just going to believe me, I guess, unless it's somewhere on the phone, I don't know. But I'm going to show the fucking text, the date, right? And then the picture. How did you end up on stage with Roseanne? Um, I did a podcast uh, uh, for some comedian friends of Skank mine, Fest? DJ Okerson. Did you, were you is it, was it in Vegas? Yes. Skankfest. Yes. Yes. Bro. Roseanne is a legend, bro. It was insane. <laughs> That's sick. Man, I didn't get, I played Seattle mm-hmm. the night before. Yeah. Okay. No sleep at all. Mm-hmm. No sleep. Flew in. Had to meet my girlfriend, deal with all this shit in the morning. No sleep. I don't even know what I'm going to. I have no fucking idea. You know, they're just like, come on, it's Gangfest, you know. And uh, I thought it would be podcasts in, in like a hotel or something. Right, you know what right, I mean? Right. And I didn't have no idea. And they're just leading me through, and it's just getting more lit and more lit. And there's a fucking boxing ring with two hotties slugging it out, and, foot, and there's like tiers of people right. hanging over the edge and uh, whatever. And then they lead me through, and all of a sudden, there's like what had to be like probably a thousand people in this room. And there's huge, crazy chandeliers, beautiful Vegas shit, you know? Right, right, right. The fucking people are screaming rat, rabid, and, and it's just a, uh, a table and chairs, and they're doing a podcast, you know what I'm saying? And the place is going nuts. And then they call Roseanne up, you know what I'm saying? And then they call me up. 
And I'm sitting next to fucking Roseanne. <laughs> That'll be on YouTube. If it's not already on YouTube. This time? Yeah. Yeah. That's sick. I'm sitting next to Roseanne, and it's like, how the fuck? And, and all I've been eating all morning is mushrooms. Nice. I got some shrooms I right there. I swear to you got some shrooms? I got a pound of shrooms right over here. Yeah. How hard have we been looking for shrooms last week? I got a whole pound for you if you want it. Ever since I went to fucking skank fest i love listen brother i you're my man there's like three pounds in that trash bag <laughs> <laughs> but bro so you're shrooming you're fucking having a time and then oh roseanne's sitting next no to you no sleep <laughs> yeah. no sleep right and i get up there everybody's up on the stage drinking and passing blunts and i'm like double cat and coke you know what i mean yeah yeah and it's two in the afternoon and it's just as lit and, and, and when we do the podcast it's so lit, right? Then they're like, we'll take it to the green room. So I'm going through this packed crowd. It's everybody's party, it's music, bitches dancing, everybody's smoke blowing weed in this fine ass establishment. They take me in the green room and it's the exact same fucking thing. It's just lit. <laughs> it's just lit in the green room. And it's dark and there's a DJ and there's food everywhere. And I'm like, what's the fucking difference? Right. You know what I mean? I've taken mad pictures all everywhere out there and I'm like, oh, green room, fuck yeah, let's go. Yeah, we'll you know go relax in the green room. I'm yeah. like, oh, it's just crazy. I'll go crazy. in the green room and it's worse. You know what I'm saying? Now, I was going to ask you on the wrestling tip, man, like, you know, like you said, you you guys, I remember seeing you guys come out as like, like on, I, I want to say, was it on Raw? Back and right, man. I took a Stone Cold Stunner, brother. You took a Stunner? Fucking yes. I got Stone Cold right there, man. Sometimes I think I'm He's lying. He's behind your head. Sometimes I think I'm lying to myself. I'm like, is that true? Yes, man. Brother, you, you want to hear the story? Yes. He was like, I remember when we first met Stone Cold in WWE, he was like, he sat down by me and Joey in the arena. And nobody's in there yeah. yet. And he, we just, he's like, what kind of music do you like? I answered him, then he's like, um... What kind of, um, do you hunt? I'm like, no. <laughs> and he's like, basically, we had nothing in common. Nothing in common with Stone Cold. <laughs> nothing. And it was just like, and then, so anyway, like probably two months or a month later, two months, whatever, um, he's like, all right, you know how to take a stunner? And I said, yes. He said, all right, listen, I'm going to come out there. First thing I'm going to do is kick you in the stomach and give you a, a stunner. Or no, he said, the first thing I'm going to do is kick him in the stomach and, and give him a stunner. I'm going to pop him, turn around, and kick. You know, you got it? I'm like, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm number two. I got it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And, and so he's like, um, uh, you know, okay. And, and he's like, are you sure you got it? And I'm like, yeah. So then we go to the gorilla position. We're about to go out there. And he's like, hey, man, are you sure you know? You know, <laughs> Do you know how to take a stunner? I'm like, yeah, bro, I got it. He goes, so we go out there and... First person he kicks is me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so like, he did it out of order. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I wasn't even expecting it. I'm like all oh, halfway turning around and shit because I'm still thinking we got to look like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm just like, oh, you know what I mean? And I took it all shitty, but I tried, you know what I mean? And I'm just thinking, I want to tell Shaggy, him. If did I Shaggy take it again, better than you? Huh? Did, did he take it? Did Shaggy take the stunner better than you did? Shaggy took everything better, better than me. But Shaggy didn't take the stunner. <laughs> oh, he didn't? Yeah, he kicked the guy from the headbangers. Oh, okay, okay. Gave him a stunner. At, you know, he was whatever. But anyway, yeah, it was dope, though, man. That's sick. So you got to hang out with Vince. You got to hang out with Stone Cold. Take a fucking stunner. I didn't get to hang with Vince. But you got to chop it up with him for a sec. For a meet second. him. Say hi. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and and after that, every week, we see him in the hallway and say hi or whatever. Were thing. you guys coming out? Uh, like, when you guys did the ECW thing, was this after they joined um, WWE? Or was this prior? Like, indie ECW days? Say it again? Like, when you, you said you came out at ECW, right? Yeah. Was this prior to them joining the conglomerate? Or was this when no? They were yeah, still this is the real ECW. So this is like independent ECW, Fuck yeah. yeah, the hot ECW where all the stars came from: Sabu, Sandman. You know, was this in Philly? Taz, yeah, Fuck. at the at the uh, ECW arena. Sick, yeah, man. Did you guys meet Paul Heyman? <clears throat> yeah, I love Paul Heyman. I love him too. He's my favorite. I think he's like my favorite character. I, I think he's, he's the greatest he's, manager ever. I think he's probably the most talented man in pro wrestling. The best mic work ever. Yeah. Did you see his promo recently where he was crying outside of Roman Reigns' locker room? No. Oh, my God. It's art. I, I haven't seen anything lately. It's good. Is it? Yeah. So he's go Vincent's gone now, right? Yeah, they sold to... Uh, UFC, but... Yeah, the, the company. So they put a big... Uh, it's, it's like a, a 
UFC and, and, and WWE are now owned. I think it's, they, they have a, a TKO is the name of the parent company. Um, and uh, I think it's better if Triple H is running things personally. I like what Triple H does, man. All right, so are you guys still throwing indie shows every once in a while? Yeah. Who, who's been the biggest? I'm with Billy Corgan's NWA right now. Oh, that's sick. I was going to say, for you guys, because you guys actually have like wrestling DVDs out and shit. Like if people ever want to go, like there's, is it, was it Juggalo World Order? Uh, JCW, JCW, Juggalo JCW. Championship Wrestling. What was the biggest wrestler that you guys were able to have kind of come Well, we had Ric Flair at the gathering. You know what I mean? You guys brought Ric Flair to the gathering? Yeah, man. Wow. Yeah. And, and uh, What did he think of that shit? He was supposed to host <laughs> yeah. all night, right? And uh, he went out there one time. He went out there another time. A fucking big ass pop almost hit him. He was like, thank you very much. Oh, he's he like, I'm getting the no fuck more. out of here. Yeah, he was out. I'd be like, yo, before you leave, could you just give me one chop to the chest, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Like, can I take my shirt off and can you make me pink real quick? <laughs> Just fuck chop yeah, the bro. fuck out of me. Pause. You know what I mean? Did you ever met him? No, no. I would love to meet him. I've met, yeah, I've, met, I've met a lot of wrestlers. I've interviewed a lot of wrestlers, but I haven't met Ric Flair, man. Fuck yeah, man. It'd be ni- it's nice to see him have this like rejuvenation in hip hop culture. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's like uh, the Griselda guys, and then obviously Offset's got the Ric Flair drip and shit. And now he's selling weed called Ric Flair drip. It's it's pretty cool. Um, I love it, man. Yeah, no, it's I it's, love it, bro. It's amazing. I wanted to ask you um, for for you guys because I had Bizarre on the show maybe a year ago, maybe seven or eight months ago, and Bizarre gave you guys a lot of love and respect and flowers. Fuck yeah! But you guys had the beef, right? Yeah, yeah. And you guys were beefing with Eminem when he was the biggest rapper in the world. Yeah, right. Yeah, and um, that had to be interesting. Great publicity for you guys. Fuck a lot yeah. of new people discovered you guys through that. Fuck yeah! So what was that like? How serious? Because you guys are in the same city. Each of you guys, I'm sure, are wrapped up with some serious guys. I mean, you know. Yeah. So well, it wasn't <laughs> like I always tell people the problem wasn't us and Eminem. It was our camps. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Run, running into each other. That was the problem. It was like almost like the entourages kept. That's what I'm saying. You know, throwing fire on the flames. Our guys go all out, juggalo everywhere. You know, right. I, I mean, psychopathic everywhere. You know, and um, yeah, man. You know, that was what was stale. But but um, man, like like, you know, the thing is, what was the what was the point I was gonna say? You could go to, like, I could back then, I could go to an Eminem show, right? And um, wear ICP shit. W- would a kid get beat up? You know what I'm saying at a, at an Eminem concert? No. And I, if he had ICP o- shit, other way around though. Yes. That's what I'm saying. If somebody wore an Eminem even hoodie that, to, to an ICP, that's in an arena. Show. Yeah, 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 that's an arena, right? right? We're in a small club, you right? Know? If but it's the other way around. Don't wear a fucking D12 you know hoodie to yeah. the ICP show. But but you know, thankfully everything's cool, you know. And I remember proof, uh, make squashing the beef. You know, he seemed it, like he was a peacekeeper for a lot of... He was so dope for yeah. coming over and um, squashing the beef, man. Uh, uh, rest in peace, proof. He was so dope. Like, I was so happy to be... And honored to be included in that. Yeah. Because he was squashing M's beef with, with Royce. big names. Yeah, he was squashing his beef with Royce. Yeah, he yeah. was squashing beef with big... Because M was going around back then dropping crazy names. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, he was. And, and, and he was beefing with a lot of underground rappers like Dilated at Peoples time, right? and Everlast <laughs> and... Yeah, M had some random beefs. Yeah, man. But, yeah, but um, yeah, I, I, and when he came to the office and shit, and and then we went bowling and drinking. You went bowling against, with M with D twelve oh, with D twelve. So with the crew in a, with against ICP. Wow. Yeah. So, he, so that in was our crew. Yeah. That's dope. It was dope. More rappers should. First, we were at a concert. That's that that's how people should resolve things. Let's yeah, hang man. out and let's fucking bowl, man. Shout out to Isham, who's in the building. That's right. Um, I was going to say, Fago is very much a thing that I only knew about because of y'all. Like, my whole life, I didn't know Fago was a real thing. I always thought it was just your guys' drink, right? Didn't know it was a thing. Oh, I mean, really? later on, I, f- I found out, like, when I grew up and, like, you know, certain liquor stores would carry, like, exotic snacks in, on yeah. the West Coast, they'd have Fago. And then we go to Detroit... And any liquor store you walk into, there's like 50 flavors. It's oh, pretty yeah. crazy. Yeah. Hello. I mean, 
did they ever give you guys a piece of the company? They don't fuck with us. That's insane. Man, let me tell you something. The only thing they ever did for us, yeah, right, was give us a Fago machine in our office. Okay, that's <laughs> like, it. Like, and, and I'm gonna tell you something else. That's fucking. Crazy. Here's why they did it. Right. Not because you guys are, oh, your ICP, um, you know, oh, dope, you know. It's because all they know is we're probably their biggest customer. Because you guys, so all the- t- Who else buys more Fago? What, like we do other than may- maybe- Maybe grocery major stores. Grocery, right, right. grocery departments. But we're right in there. And they probably put Fago machines in the grocery departments all the time too. They just think we're one of them. They don't fucking so know. So when you guys were launching- two, Not that they're massive when either. You guys they're were right la- in Detroit. It's a Detroit thing. We are obviously helping these motherfuckers oh massively. So they when you guys say, are you guys are launching all these two leaders into the crowd, you're paying for those. We used to try to talk to him. We'd have an attorney talk to him, like, "Look, man, let, let's do something." You know, like, yeah. like just put out like a, a clown cola or something. Oh, that'd you be know, crazy. A special. Let's do a special cover for people that want it, motherfucker. Right. right. You know and what I'm saying? Sell out. I'm not asking you to put it in grocery stores. We'll buy them. Yeah. But let's work together. So they never even gave you man, guys we, soda. They wouldn't to- even let us use their fucking name in a, in a um. Isn't that ridiculous what I'm saying? We ought to throw a fucking bomb in that place. <laughs> Allegedly. 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 No, that is crazy. Because I don't think, I think. Why don't they work with us? I think. What the fuck? You're the. You don't re- mean fucking fangos I've thrown? And sold. What the fuck? Not Over even- 30 years? <sighs> they better work with us and suck my dick. From the, the back. Fuck? From the back. From the back. From the back. Backwards twice. Yeah. That's crazy. So you guys were buying all those two liters? You, they weren't giving yeah, them to you? Yeah, man. Come on. Wow. Bro, we're getting them at whatever they're charging, you know. I always wondered, right? When you guys, like, would, would map out your tours. You have to have semis. Well, no. I, I, was, well, I, was, I was just curious, like. On tour, you know. You guys map out your tours. Is there, like, a, like the venue knows, like, hey, look, man. At the end of this show. You better have a cleanup crew because it's going to be sticky. Of course they know. Because you guys were launching. Man, it used to be wild. The, we, I remember, listen to this. We did, back when all we had was Detroit. Mm-hmm. We were, we had not popped anywhere. We fucking ran Detroit though, including Toledo, mm-hmm. which is like an hour. Right. You know what I mean? From Detroit. So, um. This Toledo radio station is doing a festival. This is like fucking 94. They're doing a festival. But we're this massive local thing, right? Right. So they put us on this festival with uh, Coolio, Outkast. Um, uh, I don't remember right now. Too short. Too short. Too short. You know what I mean? And we're on there. And we got Fago. <laughs> Half the fans... You know what I mean? Yeah. Aren't juggalos, you know what I mean? But there was a lot of fucking juggalos in there, you know? And it was hype, but Outcast was like, what the fuck? You got Fago all over our fucking turntables, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They were like, yo, I feel them though. No, we had I'm to like, pay them. Who the to- fuck are these guys throwing soda dressed like clowns? What is going on in fucking Toledo? Straight up, they surrounded us. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. So they- Outcast. They got mad, so you guys they had to... Thought, re- they walked up on us, you know, with a message. One dude could have said, I, but they sent 15 to say... Hey, you guys got to pay for these turntables. Huh? You guys bought new turntables? Yeah, we had to buy new, a new equipment for them, you know what yeah, I mean? It's the right thing to do. Yeah, of course. What's the best flavor of Fago, allegedly? That's what I'm saying. One guy could have sent that, said that. No, for sure. You know what I'm saying? But what's your favorite flavor of Fago? Uh, At, and this is assuming that they suck your dick from the back and apologize. Um, I like grape. Grape, that's pretty yeah. basic. What was the one that we had that was like blue? Oh, I didn't like blue mist. No, blue my, mist. No, bro. My favorite favorite is um, and then that they, I think is genius is is called firework. That's the one. It's like a bomb pop. Bomb pop. That shit's fire. Do you know how that became a pop? Mm-mm. Fago ran a contest. Think of a flavor. You know what I'm saying? Somebody sent that in. That's a dope fucking idea. A bomb pop and add some fucking Dude, seltzer we to were, it or whatever we were, it is. We were know? in Detroit and like, I remember we probably bought like nine bottles of Fago just to try. We're like, bro, we're never, like, we're this is crazy. We've never seen so many random flavors of soda. And like all yeah, the rappers man. are like, you got to try they this got one. Cream peach. 
Yeah, they crazy. got Moon Mist, Red Rock and Rye. You know, um, they got Rock and Rye. Moon Mist was good. Well, Rock, Rock and Rye is Dr. Pepper. Okay. Moon Mist is, is um, it's like Mountain a, Dew. It's Mountain Dew, yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? No, maybe it wasn't Moon Mist. I'm thinking of the blue one. Yeah, but the one he said. Um, how cool is it to see Drake wearing y'all shit? <laughs> Cause, cause there's- First of all, I don't give a fuck what anybody says. I don't believe Drake wore that having ever even heard any of our music. I think he wore that as a fashion thing. Right. Okay. I don't doubt that. Because I think that's what's happening. I don't doubt that. Over time, you know, we're old school and, you know, people, you know, yeah. I've seen in a fashion magazine- an ICP shirt for five hundred dollars. Okay, it was like ripped, like it looked. It you guys get like a cut of that? Old. It was like a fucking vintage thing. one. It was a vintage one, huh? No, that's it was crazy. like fashion. It was the design of the shirt. You, know you guys saying? need to get a piece Some of that. Company, huh? That's what I'm saying. That like, like it's a it's a fashion thing. Get what I'm saying? Like, well, I, did I, Drake had the was it the jersey? Huh? Was Drake wearing a jersey? A ring, a, a ringmaster jersey, which is our second album. Okay, come on, like, like uh, uh, the second Joker's card, you know. Uh, what the fuck is Drake doing wearing that? But, but I you mean, listen, I mean? it's got to feel kind of cool, though. Let me tell to, you something else that you, makes no sense. LL Cool J, right, just did his tour, is doing his tour, mm-hmm. right? He has the wall behind him. What's on the wall? Have you seen it? Bunch of names, right? Yeah. Your name's on there? My name. Just your name. Just mine. Not Shaggy. Not what ICP. In the fuck. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it How sounds like you're complaining. Me, it, <laughs> it, I've never met LL in my motherfucking life. I listen to his station all day, every day. I've never heard a blip of our shit. And we are 90s to the fucking right. core. You know right, what I'm right, saying? Right, right, right. And, and um, I'm like, why is my name on that wall? You know what I mean? It makes no fucking sense. Does it, it, you don't feel like it's a, it's dope to see you get some acknowledgement of course, all these but years I think later? it's like an accident or like, you know. No. Like, let me tell you where I think it came from. All right? What was that magazine? Does anybody, Rudy? Was it the New York Times or uh, New York? Um, Something like that. It was, a, it was a, uh, not a magazine, a newspaper, right? I think it was a newspaper. Well, you know, it could also be his graphic guy as a juggalo. No, I'm telling you, this newspaper came out and it did a story, the 50 greatest voices in hip hop. And so like, you're, you, you were on there. And they, he asked, I was on the list. You know what I'm saying? And I was just like, and at the same time, I, would, I, I did that interview for that big newspaper. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Um, it's when that tour started. And uh, I saw my name on the wall. You might know? have been that. And I'm just like, what the fuck is going on with that? You know. I mean, they also might. You they know, could have said ICP. True. You know what I'm saying? In, in in both. True. You know. But for you, like, I always like you said, man. Like when you think of juggalos, historically, it's the outcasts of society. It's people. <clears throat> you know, a lot of people are from broken homes. A lot of you know, most of the people who I know um, <clears throat> from AZ who were juggalos were were just that. You Double know? come from pain, man. And it was never it was never the cool thing to wear. It was always like, oh, those are juggalos, you know? But to have Drake, who's like the biggest rapper on the planet, <laughs> rocking your guys' shit. It's, it's, it's an, almost it's, crazy how full circle that is. Like, it, it, it's an honor, you know? He's got like, I don't remember, but it's like 300 million followers or something on, on, on that. Do you Instagram. guys see a spike in merch sales? 300 fucking million. The thing is, it just looks cool, though. For sure. Like it doesn't no, say I see you, really you guys had really fly ass. You guys really had fly it's merch. Another very well possibility. He might have fashion ninjas who work for him and just get like, my Like yo, I got this vintage with, jersey. With, with, yeah, man. Or, or just whatever, you know. You ever heard, of, you know, he he just yeah, I just don't think he, it has anything to do with our music. I, what know. what kind of pop was that for you though? Did you guys see any like spike in merch sales? No, uh, not that I know, you know. Everybody's memed, memed it out in the juggler world. I bet they have. Yeah. And then Post Malone, too. Shout yeah. out to Post. I, mean, oh, I think Post, 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 Post knows who you guys are. Huh? He's got a... Post, Post knows who... Yeah, Shag, Shaggy met Post. Dope. I would love to put, meet Post. Post is probably one of my top three favorite artists. Yo, can you educate me... Right now. Oh, Post is amazing. You know what I'm saying? It's really hard for him to make a bad song, I say. 
He's so he's just, fucking dope. He's just such a talented and, and such a good dude. It seems super, super sweet guy. You know what I mean? Um, can you? Did you guys? Because I again, I'm not. I, I you know I told you this off the off the air. I was never like a big fan of your guys' music, but I'm very aware of you guys and your your universe. You know, did you get twisted ever squash your guys' uh, the civil war of the 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 juggalo world? No. Fuck twisted. Okay, I gotta ask. Day I die. Really? Yeah. Fuck them. Fuck them. Fuck them. I ain't never been betrayed harder in my life. It was a, it was a fucking physical pain. Mm. The way those motherfuckers betrayed me. Because you guys did put them on, like literally gave them I a, gave them, them a fan base. Right. I gave them the name. Right. They didn't have paint on. They were two other rappers. You know what I mean? We signed them, put the paint on, created them. You know what I'm saying? They got insane talent. You know what I'm saying? But we created that. You know what I'm saying? Yo, what up, guys? We got to stop the interview to tell you about our folks at MyBookie. It's winning season right now. NFL, we're in the thick of it. I've been doing really good on my NFL bets, by the way. Plus, NBA, officially back. We got playoff baseball. It's going crazy, especially if you like to throw down some of that money and do a little gambling. You got to head over to MyBookie. Uh, this was dope about my boogie. It doesn't matter if your team sucks. My team, the Cardinals, they're trash. Don't matter. I'm still winning on Sundays, baby. All right. At my boogie. All right. You can use my boogie for your daily odd boosts, same game parlays, and take advantage of the crazy huge prize pool contest. Plus, right now, my bookie has a no strings attached. That's the important thing. No strings attached cash bonus that lets you deposit and withdraw quick. That's free cash. No strings attached. Deposit, take it out, and then go about your day. Or get in on some of this NFL and NBA action, baby, all right? Just use the promo code BOOTLEG when you sign up. Go to mybookie.ag, use the promo code BOOTLEG on your first deposit, and you'll receive up to $200 in cash. What are we talking about? No strings attached. What? My bookie, use the promo code BOOTLEG, all right? Maybe you want to gamble on some NFL. Maybe you want to get in on some of this early NBA action. Maybe you want to get in on some of this playoff baseball. It's really on you. Use the promo code BOOTLEG and receive up to $200 in cash. That's right. Try my bookie right now. Use that promo code BOOTLEG and you can grab, um, how about this, man? There's some crazy odds going on. And I like this one. Because what you can do is you can throw down on a potential Super Bowl front runner and uh, plus 38,000 on the Eagles and Chiefs on the Super Bowl, plus 38,000. If you put a hundred dollars, you win $38,000. You're not going to get those odds anywhere. MyBookie.ag, use the promo code bootleg right now, bet anything, anytime, anywhere. Only with my bookie. Plus, we got to give a big shout out to our family at King Palm. Man, we love King Palm over here on the Bootleg Cap Podcast. This is what's great about King Palm. First of all, it's all about that organic, no tobacco leaf. This thing right here is a boy. Look at that. Sure, sure, sure. That's just a leaf right there. King Palm, they got everything you need, man. They got these cones with the squeeze and pop, terpenes in them, the flavors. This right here is the, uh, the dragon fruit. We got the Grape HD, the Watermelon Wave, so many flavors. What's dope about King Palm, if you're in whatever city you're in, you could find King Palm at your local smoke shop, your local 7-Eleven, all right? I'm telling you, King Palm, you're not going to ever, ever experience a more cleaner, more natural, more of just great way to smoke what you're smoking, all right? You stuff one of these boys up with some flour, uh, and, and you just, you're off to the races. I'm telling you, you hit the tip. You get hit with that flavor, and it's, man, it's nothing like it. The squeeze and pop on King Palm is insane, all right? And they got all size cones, all right? So go to King Palm, man. Organic tobacco-free leaves of all sizes. Like, this is a, this is a, this is, look, 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 we're talking about all sizes here. What are we talking about? What are we talking about here, boys? All right? Go to kingpalm.com right now. You go order whatever you want, man. They got accessories. They got trays. They got grinders. They got ashtrays. They got, damn, all kind of flavors of their Leafs. Everything. 50% off when you use the promo code bootleg. That's 50% off. Order whatever you want at kingpalm.com. Let's get back to the interview. Like, it was it was. What twisted. was the, what you know, was the betrayal? The, the fact that they he, left? They, you know, they, they were dropping N-bombs everywhere. And, um, 
in the raps. Like, you know what I mean? And we're like, what the fuck are y'all doing? You know what I mean? We had to fucking hone them in. You know what I'm right, saying? Because right, right, right. they're talented as fuck. They were talented as yeah. fuck, you know? We had to hone them in, and they're just dumb and, and wild style, you know? But we fucking showed them how to do it, showed them how to market, showed them all that shit, you know what I'm saying? And, and brung them on tour. The first time we ever built ourselves up to go on a national tour in a bus... They were in the motherfucker right. opening. You know what I'm saying? We just gave them love. I, I, at first, the jugglers, the jugglers were like, when they came out, two, got two other guys in clown paint, the jugglers were like, fuck you! You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it took us years. You know what I mean? For them we, to accept them. Yeah, man. We were like, these are our boys. We're putting them out, psychopathic. You know what I mean? Yeah. And still, people couldn't understand the idea of Juggalos being something different than ICP. Right. They didn't want to bring because these Because then two. you guys had like... AP. And it was a fat guy and a skinny guy. Just right. like me. Right, you right, know right, what right. I mean? It was like, what the fuck Well, and then this? a lot of your guys' artists ended up with face paint. Blaze Your Dead Homie and uh, Anybody uh, yeah, Killer, we, ABK. All that. we, all that's what yeah. I'm saying. Mm -hmm. we, we did our label like a wrestling. Yeah. Brother, we created characters. We were like, all right, Blaze, what, what does Blaze do? You know, Blaze is from back in the day with the, when they wore the clock, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And the Raiders shit and everything, and he got killed. And now he's supposed to be current rapping that old shit. That was our right. idea back then, you know what I'm saying? And, um, and then uh, anybody kill up, right? He was it, native, right? Yeah. Yeah. I was like, what do you, uh, what, what's your uh, heritage? What, what, what is your ethnicity or whatever yeah. and he was like I'm native and I'm like rep that because yo the natives love y'all I told I told him rep that yeah you know what I'm saying right and all your shit you know and and we just helped these motherfuckers and signed them and brought them on tour I'm paying all these ninjas to open for us in front of our own crowd right 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 I'm fucking paying these motherfuckers all my life it was like 10 years, 15 years, I think 16 years I, I did that with Twisted, you know what I'm saying? Right. Paying them, you know? So was the betrayal the fact that they left the label? You know what the problem was, bro? Hmm. When they got bigger in the Juggalo world, yeah. and Juggalos loved them. Yeah, because they, they became really big. Right. I used to be come to town and draw 2,500 or something on, on a good night, right? right? Have them on a tour. We do the same thing. Same tickets. Exactly. Right. It, but we're paying them all this money, you know? It was that like that forever. Mm -hmm. that, but we, we loved them. Right. You know what I'm saying? Then there was a group called um, Axe Murder Boys, right? Okay. And um, they won a contest. We like had a contest and shit to see who we're going to sign, you know? They won a contest. Twisted was like, fuck them. You know what I mean? They won the contest. They were like, they're, they feel like, why they they won a contest. They don't deserve to be here. Fuck them. They wouldn't even Twisted wouldn't even let them come in the studio. Oh wow! Right. So the the uh, one guy in, in in X Murder Boys, Young Wicked, he was like, um, he had like a hatred for Twisted after that. You know. So years later, when Twisted started their own label and all that, you know what I mean? They signed them. Huh? Did they sign no, that no, guy? No. Oh, okay. No. The guy at the, I remember at the gathering at the Young Wicked show, he's like, all I got to say is psychopathic for life. Fuck that other noise. Everybody knew exactly what he was talking about, you know, the whole right, crowd right, right. and shit. And, and um, then, um, <clears throat> so when, when uh, we got betrayed, that motherfucker, they, that, when that dude, that dude Young Wicked, he was my, he was my uh, protege. Protege, yeah. He was my producer. I'm putting him on. Yeah. I love that kid so much. I was like, it's my goal. I'm sorry, let me take a drink. Do your thing. I said, I never said this for anybody. Yeah. I said, it's my goal to see you and your family in living in a paid off house in Detroit, all right, with significant money in the bank. That's my goal, right? That's what we were working toward for him mm -hmm. because he had his two kids out there and his girl was pregnant again. You know right. what I'm saying? And that was his dream to move them here. You know what I'm saying? And he wanted to live in Detroit. You know what I'm saying? That motherfucker got my brother daughter pregnant. You know what I'm saying? And betrayed the motherfucking hell out of all of us. Your brother's daughter? Yeah. How old was she? 
She was uh, of age. You oh, know? She was of age. Okay. But, but um, still, that's crazy, bro. He denied it. He denied it. Yeah, well, he got. My brother told me, man. It was. No, what happened was, my brother's daughter told my brother, "Hey, I've been messing around with uh, Young Wicked," and my brother was like, "What?" And so my brother didn't tell none of us. Because at the he, time, he's got a pregnant girl, too. Or he has a, a yeah, lady and kids. Yeah, he's got a kids. family. Yeah, he's got a whole family. You know family. what I'm saying? Yeah. That he worships and puts his shit on in front right. of us, you know? So my brother's own daughter tells him, hey, I've been with Young Wicked, you know? So my brother pulls that motherfucker in, a, in the room in the office, you know what I mean? Just him. And he's like, stay the fuck away from my daughter. You know what I'm saying? She ain't your local piece. My brother's a don, that psychopath. Right. You know what I'm saying? There's four of us. Me, my brother, Joey, and Billy. My brother is a Don. And this motherfucker. And my brother said, I'm not going to tell anybody what you did. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to tell anybody. Stay the fuck away from my daughter. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> That's right? crazy. So a month later, my brother's daughter tells him she's still seeing him. You know what I'm saying? Oh. So my brother had to tell us. And it was like. You know, so listen, you guys, all that happened mm -hmm. right when Twisted and our, us fell out. When you guys had your, yeah. Right? And fucking, they signed them. The next, like, the, the day Rob let us know. You guys dropped them? There was a picture the next day, him with them like this. It was insane. They hated each other for years. Yeah, they didn't even want him in the studio. Until they had something in common. And that was fuck you Fuckery. Yeah. Damn. On us. And it was insane, bro. These were yeah. my, my guy, my Your protege, yeah, like you said, yeah. Anyway, I'm, I ain't, fuck all that, you know? Jesus. Yeah, I, I, I fuck them all, man. Fuck all that shit. Anybody, killer, all of them motherfuckers, Blaze. All them motherfuckers can fuck the fuck off. I hate them. So it's safe to say there'll never be another dark. No, dude, dark Lotus I never album. think about them. I don't. I don't. I didn't. Watch. Yeah, see, I, I, see, I'm like I said. I, I like I'm, I'm aware of you and Twisted's issues. I didn't know you had issues with everybody else. But oh, you, yeah. you definitely gave a lot of people a lot of careers. And and the one thing is, is but you know what, man? If Juggalos come in rocking that shit, it's something I don't give a fuck. But I was gonna say mean? the one thing is, is you guys have, you know, I think some people. Um, don't understand like if you guys embrace an artist not even necessarily somebody who signed to you you're if you let them into your world those fans are the gonna, instant instant if now we, we put so many people on they're gonna we, buy tickets they're gonna buy the shirts and they're gonna support you and they're like the most dedicated fans there are yeah. in music so well man it's crazy but um it's no different than than it is on a on a massive uh, glo global fucking level like Jay and everybody. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? It's just on a smaller thing, you know. But it's definitely true. If we if we put out an artist and put him on tour and we give him the stamp, Juggalos, unless that motherfucker is something they reject. Right. You know what I'm saying? Which which you know, uh, um. But that shit is granted. You're gonna be um. Making money, you're gonna be able to tour, mm -hmm. you know, small clubs and shit like we were talking about. Like, you know, hey, how, how cool is it? Speaking of that, you guys had Jelly Roll on tour with you. We not, got Ouija not, Mac. You know who that is? I, I don't, bro. When I was gonna say uh, b before you tell me, it, how cool is it to see Jelly become a, a country fucking superstar? And what was it like three or four years ago? He was on your guys' tour. Yeah, it's pretty wild. It is. It's like kind of cool to just see like everybody's getting their just due, you know? Fuck yeah, man. Yeah. 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 I think everybody needs to get off his dick though. Like like um people doing his shit. That whole sound now. You oh know? yeah, everybody. The whole thing of being in a studio playing a song, yeah. you know, uh, and I now everybody want to do that. Get off his dick. You're right about that. There's a the lot fuck? of people. You got 900 jelly rolls all sudden. There's out a here. lot of people who see what he's doing and they're like, "Hey, maybe we should try to do country." Get off his <laughs> dick. Exactly. You sound pathetic. Oh. You know what I'm saying? You sound. <laughs> um. Yeah. You want to walk him out there? Um. Just do a wide shot. I was gonna say you do you do have a new album that you're touring right now with Esham and uh, Ouija Mac. Ouija Mac. Yeah, Three Headed Monster. It's like a side project. You know what I mean that I'm doing with them. And uh, Shaggy it, just got off tour, so you guys are each doing your solo shit right now, and then this side project. So yeah. tell me about the th Three Headed Monster. Well, Ouija is an artist that we that we uh, signed, and you know it's just weird the way fucking evolution is because after Twisted and all that. We signed Ouija, 
and um and we signed some other guys. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We kind of put out after all the minutes, we tried to <clears throat> rebuild the label for a minute. But we Ouija is um a motherfucking machine, a workhorse. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like he drops a video every, I mean, a good looking professional video, like literally every month. When he's not torn, you know what I mean? Right. He's got like another good looking video and he's pumping it hard. He's touring all the time. Like we just did a month. We're on tour right now, right? Yeah. And, and, and uh, right when I go home, he ju- starts his next six week tour. You know what I'm saying? Right. He grinds like that. And his merchandise ideas are dope. Like he incorporated all this Asian shit into his name and shit. Just like, just weird, like a. Uh, Japanese writing on, right. on a jersey and shit. It just looks dope. You know what I mean? Like, he comes up with things I don't see anybody doing. And suddenly you see everybody, the juggalos all doing it, you know? Another another dude is uh, Shaggy the Airhead. He's a fucking uh, DJ, right? I start, in his beats, he's got the tag. Shaggy the Airhead, you know, yeah. like that, right? So he makes beats too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and um, I, we use his beats in our music for now, like like last five years. Right. He also is a fucking um, uh, artist and a clothing guy, right? Mm-hmm. And his clothes are fucking outrageous, right? I believe that dude's out selling our shit in the Juggalo world. Wow. Because the everywhere I go when I rock his shit, people are like, "Dope outfit," you know what I mean? He's gonna be a monster, I believe. That's dope. Like I think he's gonna outgrow. Like, his shit could pop mm-hmm. in hip-hop, that fashion. It's that fucking dope looking, his, his merch. Are you and Shaggy ever going to hang it up and, and, and retire? Because I, I, feel, I, feel like, I feel like passion has to be the driving force for anybody doing music, right? Is there, like, like, I mean, you guys still love it, obviously. Yeah. Could you see yourself getting to a point where you're like, this is the final ICP album? No. There's seven. There's uh six six more to make. You know what I mean? In our in our uh, hopefully legacy. You know what I'm saying? Well, because uh, all the albums are kind of like connected, right? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. There's the first six Joker cards came out. You know, it's just a black cover with a clown face on yep. it. You know, and then uh, the second. Now we're in the second deck. It's five. You know, it's six. six there's going to be six, six, five. Right. And that five is because, like, let me explain it like this. After the first six, it offers the end. Like, the six jokers card was heaven or hell, mm. right? That's the six jokers card. In the second deck, you know, the next album, that's what everybody's waiting to see what it's going to be. You know what I mean? In the juggle of the world. Well, you guys but already got f- all this planned out. Yeah. But the five, <clears throat> the last five, you know what I mean? Um... It doesn't have a six jokers card because we die for real. Mm. You get what I'm saying? It's supposed to show you how to inside. It's supposed to show you how to be a better person. Make you and and um. It also helps you vent. Like the people we're killing in the music are pedophiles and racists and shit like that. You know, and it's like um, people get therapy from that shit you know what i mean right. and uh, uh wife beaters and shit you know or abuse child abusers they come from that shit or whatever they have that problem you right. know what i'm saying so their can. wife do, their wife or husband does beat them you right, get what right, i'm right. saying and they're inventing you know and the music's there for them us creating these illusions of going in there and killing them with fucking axes and right. chainsaws the way we describe it and everything it's it's um it's it's fantasy right you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you guys are definitely... Everybody's always saying, keep it real, keep it real. We're all in a real world all the fucking time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't want the music... Why can't the music do something else once in a while? Why is Take that a somewhere problem? else. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. You know what I mean? Nah, for sure. Um, give me... Let what, me ask you another question. Yeah. You, you introduced us as hip-hop legends. How the fuck, if we're hip-hop legends, how the fuck is Source Magazine never even made a blip mention of our name? I just think that you guys are uh, you guys are the underground for real. I feel like yeah, for whatever yeah. reason, commercial hip hop publications never embraced you guys, and I think um, that's what I was kind of going to get to. Is I think that there was a point in time, like you said, you guys would come out and flip you guys off, and it was cool to hate you guys, right? What do you think is the biggest misconception though 
about, because I feel like there's a stereotype about Juggalos, right? What do you think is the biggest misconception about Juggalos? Oh, um, you know, the, 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 if you, I guess today, I'm, I like where Juggalos sit in pop culture. Yeah. You know what I mean? I see jokes and shit on sitcoms and TV, you know, people know what they are. Yeah. You, you, you know, Juggalos, my, my man, are the very reason we're legit. For sure. You know what I mean? They change your guys' life. I mean, they support But, yeah, you know, pe- yeah, uh, people people um, have such a big opinion about these juggalos, and it it's people. Right. What has been the craziest? It's dentists. No, no. It's I, fucking that, mechanics. Well, that's it's what lumberjacks. I was say. Like, I'll meet people random places, and and it's crazy to like, oh, you, have, you got a hatchet man tattoo on your leg? Oh, like. You know, like who? What has been the most like, like random person who has an occupation, like a crazy job that happens to be a juggler? Like, is, Good is it a cop? Is it an FBI agent? Is it a dentist? Is it you know? Mm-hmm. I, I seen cops all the time. You know what I mean? Um, one time, me and Joy were standing out. We used to have a TV show on the Fuse Network, and we're standing out in New York doing that in the in the fucking. Cop car came pulling up right, right out on us. You know, and the guy gets shot. He's like, dude, let me get an autograph. I love you guys, you know. And he's got the Brooklyn accent, you yeah. know. That was dope. But, but um, damn, that's a good question. Because um, I, I say this, like, when I, when, I, when I explain to people who you, who you guys are, I say they're, they're, they have fans. I said there's fucking people who you would not even guess with their faces or their logo tattooed on them right now. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. They're... they're um, the um, I I mean, you know I had like heart problems, right? And um, a heart surgeon um contacted me, and he's like um, brother, I would love to sit you down and talk, man. I, I um I I'm a doctor, you know what I mean? And I grew up on your shit. I love you, you know what I mean? That's he's crazy. a fucking heart surgeon, you know what I mean? Wow. And he's like um, and I'm like, you're my new doctor, ninja. You know what I mean? He he, he I, I, cause I. I don't even like my fucking doc, you know. Right. But I, I was like, you're my new doctor. Not that I have a relationship. I ain't seen my, any doctor in a year. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? But I'm like, anything goes wrong, you're my doctor. You know what I mean? And um, fuck yeah. And I was, I'm thinking I'm about to fly to see him. And I'm like, where are you at? Where are you in? Anna. And he's like, Rochester. And I was like, oh, that's like, I'm thinking Rochester, New York. He's like, no, Rochester, Michigan. I'm like, what? You can drive to you. <laughs> You're local, you know what I mean? I was like, fuck yeah, dog, that's the shit. You that's know, it's dope, just man. A, right there, you know what I mean? That's super dope, man. Uh-huh. Yeah, but yeah, um, I can't. Uh, Ferris? Oh, Ferris is an attorney, yeah, a homie, you know what I mean? That's the guy we sued the uh, FBI with. Wow. His, he is a juggalo that recognized me at the mall. Mm. And he's like, I'm an attorney. I'm at the mall <clears throat> with my girl. And I was like, fuck yeah. You know what I mean? You're my attorney now. He's a juggalo. He's like, wow. I grew up on your shit. I know everything. And I'm like, word. So the next big show's uh, Halloween, right? Um, yeah. And then no, yeah. what What month do you guys usually do the gathering? Is, is it summertime? Uh, in August. August? Yeah, it's hot as fuck. It's hot. Yeah. Usually. But it's been pretty good the last couple of years. Nice. It, man, it was hot as fuck sometimes. And you guys do it like on private land too, I heard, right? Mm-hmm. Which makes it, you know, a lot more fun, I'm sure. <clears throat> yeah, you know, and, and um, we do the most outrageous shit, bro. I've heard. You know, <laughs> l- listen to this. Uh, we got this thing. It's like a, a hayride. We charge like 300 bucks, mm-hmm. right? It's a, it's a hayride, and <clears throat> you get a, a CD single of a song, right? A rare song. Mm-hmm. N- uh, um, uh, never heard before song, right? And... Um, we take you to across the way from the gathering into the woods, right? And we do this hunt for Bigfoot. What? Right? And you guys are there with them? Yeah, me and Joy are sitting up on a cup, a hay barrel things, looking at the crowd. There's probably like 60 people on this hay ride. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we do three a night. Oh, we do shit. them all fucking night. But they're the <laughs> fucking funnest shit of my life. And I'm telling you right now, I have no problem doing that. I wish I could do that every night. Right. In Vegas or something. Let's go look for But, bro, we make it so fucking fun. Like, 
like suddenly you'll see a Bigfoot. We got like, you know, suddenly we do, you know, we have Bigfoots out there and then um, a shootout between hunters and a Bigfoot, you know, and there's a, you know, it's just super funny. But anyway, we do a whole thing. It's like a haunted hayride sort of, you oh, know, sick. but it's like really funny because me and Joey are doing live commentary. But <clears throat> this last year, we did Bigfoot's an alien thing. Mm-hmm. So my brother's like, we need to do aliens this year. And I'm like, how the fuck we can do that on the uh, on the uh, hayride? And he was like, watch. And man, he made that motherfucker so funny and dope. That's dope. It was so fucking amazing. Like, there's a turned over car over here smoking. And there's a guy laying there. Something lifted my car up and slammed it on the ground, you know. And he's like... I need help, so we we pull him on the thing, and then um, me and Joy are just cracking on him as you know. Yeah. We, 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 and so um, uh, then then we turn the corner and shit, and my brother had like lights in in the fucking woods and shit, right. and um, sound effects, <laughs> the most corny looking UFO. This shit was amazing, bro. Well, listen, man, um, the three headed monster album's out, right? Huh? The the three headed monster album is out. Yeah, we got two albums out. Two albums, tours yeah. happening. How many more dates left? Uh, just like four. Four. Tour's almost over? Yeah. Um, you guys, man, I just, listen, like I said, I gotta, I respect y'all for, you know, just, man, you guys built an empire over the last 30 years and uh, done it independently, done it your way. So salute, man. It's, it's, Thank you, man. I think a lot of a lot of people don't even understand that you you guys laid the, the, the blueprint down for a lot of artists that are following it to this day, but they don't even know it. Yeah, man. Yeah, well, you know, we're just doing it like like the Ghetto Boys did, you know, like yeah. uh Jane Smith did, you know what I mean? And we 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 we're, we're um yeah, doing it following it the way he did it, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And uh and in text doing it and and it's cool. To, you don't really fucking need a label no more. Yeah. Why the fuck do you need a label? You know what I mean? You can post your own shit. You can make your own video and post that on YouTube. Like, what the fuck else is a label? You know what I mean? CDs don't even exist no more. There's no actual product anymore. There's nothing to store. There's nothing to ship. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, mate, yeah, well, I mean, you guys have a great, like, you guys have shit to sell. <laughs> like you said, it's still important for you to sell physical CDs and Yeah, but like, you, you know, if I was a young artist and they were like, um, if a young artist asked me for advice, I'd be like, fucking YouTube. And YouTube fuck a record label. and f- stay indie. Yeah, man, one hundred percent. Yo, um, you were say- saying this off the air a bit, but you, you, um, for people who don't know, this is pretty freaking hilarious. But uh, you know, there is a, a young rapper who's on who's on the freshman cover, Baby Tron. Yeah, and uh, his dad was signed to you guys. Yeah, well, yeah, I didn't see here. I didn't know anything about Baby Tron. Right. Okay, I was doing a. Um, I was doing um, what's it called in L.A. Um, no jumper, no jumper. Yeah, and um, afterward he's like, "Hey yo, um, do you mind sticking around?" And I was like, "Why?" He's like, "Cause I, we got a, a, a upcoming rapper who's you know really popping off really hard, you know, and getting you guys in the picture would be legendary, you know." So I was like, "Cool," you know, because we're both from Detroit or whatever, right. you know. So yeah, he shows up. <laughs> and we're going to take the picture, you know what I mean? And he's and we're taking the picture, and he's like, "I grew up at your house, dog." <laughs> and I was just like, "Hey, you know, like say it again." It's like, and, what'd you say? <laughs> and he's like, "I grew up at your house, you know. My dad is sadistic, you know." And I was like, "Bro, this kid is my son's friend. Like they they used they he had been coming to my house for years watching wrestling pay per views. Crazy." You know what I mean? And it's just, I was just like, what? You know what I mean? He's like, just killing it. You know what I mean? It, yeah. Bro. I was like, well, good for you, man. That's some shit, brother. Nah, that shit's sick, man. Let's just, do a fucking song. Y'all do definitely you know? do a song. Yeah, baby trying. You owe me for all them fucking barbecues. All that food, all the I was What's I was saying? putting the bill on the pay-per-view. Get on that, give me a hot 16. <laughs> there it is, man. Look, Violent J, appreciate you pulling up, bro. Hell yeah, I appreciate you, my man, for yes, real. Sir. Legit. Oh, fire. Good shit, man. What's going on, man? I want to shout out to our family, Ahar Dean, for presenting to you another interview. 
All right? There's another interview coming tomorrow and the next day and the next day. Shout out to Hardeen, though, if you're in Las Vegas, man. The number one dispensary in the world. They're our family. They're our brothers. They're our fucking dogs over there, man. We love them. They always are taking care of us, and they'll take care of you. If you go to Hardeen in Vegas, let's say you're landing in Vegas. You're going to go watch the Raiders. You're going to go watch a Vegas show, whatever. Get in that taxi. Tell them straight up, take me to Hardeen. When you get to Hardeen, they will get you hooked up with the craziest uh, just variety and selection of premium cannabis on the planet. And if you tell them you heard about us on the on, on the Bootleg Kev show, you say, hey, uh, Hardeen, I heard about y'all on the Bootleg Kev podcast. They're going to take care of y'all, all right? So go follow them, Hardeen underscore Las Vegas on all social media, and check them out, HardeenLasVegas.com. What's up, Hardeen?